Hey there. In my last video I showed you how to create a custom user control in Visual Studio and C Sharp. And you can see right here the control is hosted within a Windows Forms application. This is just a simple control that allows the user to select a specific color. If you haven't watched the first video, you might want to go back and see how it was created. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to add custom events to your classes. Now this is a handy little control where the user can just use the track bars to select a certain combination of red, green, and blue values. But we can't really do anything with it right now except to see the color itself because it doesn't really pass the information to the host application in any way. So we're going to see how to raise an event that will actually communicate this information to the host application. So to do that let's go back to the control itself and you can see this control is right here. This is a class library that's holding the code for the control. And let's take a look at the code itself. And here you can see we have the scroll method which is accessed by all three track bars. Every time the user adjusts one of those track bars it comes down here gets the red blue and green values and sets the panel to that color. So it works but it just doesn't do anything with that data. So the first thing we're going to do is add a public property to the class and this will be the the field and the property that will actually hold the value that's generated by the the control itself. So the, what you can actually do is type prop full and press tab twice and that will actually generate the syntax that you need for a private field which will hold the data and the public property which will control access to that field. So I'm going to change this type to color. It changes it in the property. Change that to underscore control color. Then change the property name to control color. Okay, so now we have the field and the property. Now we need to update that field when the controls are changed. So we come down here to the method, and I'm actually going to create another method variable here, color. Let's change the case a little bit. And I'm going to take this little method and put that there. And we should always try to define things once and only once if possible. So now I can set this to control color. And then I can set the field since we're in the same class. I'll just go ahead and use the actual field equals control color. Let's go ahead and build that. So now, if I go to the, the code for this, this form, this Windows Forms application, color selection 1, you can see that it actually has a public property called control color that we just created. Now the problem is that the host application has no way of actually knowing when this property changes so it still can't really do much with the data. So we're going to go back to the actual control code and we're going to add a public event that it's going to raise that the host application can listen to. So the first thing we're going to do is come up here at class level and say public event event handler and color changed. This declares an event with an event handler delegate which is actually a pointer to a method 
and this event will be raised every time the user changes one of those trackbar controls. So the next thing we're going to do is add a method that's going to raise this event. So we can actually do that right here, right under the public property. And we'll say protected virtual void and on color changed. And we're going to use event args, event arguments, E as the parameters or the arguments of that method. And then we're simply going to raise the event. We're going to say color changed. Set up a boolean condition there. Invoke and this, which means this instance of the class, and E, the event arguments that I just declared. So when that event fires off, it's going to invoke this method. And virtual means that this method can be overridden in any class that inherits from this. And void means that it doesn't return a value. It simply carries out this action. Now that we've added this event, let's see how it's affected the host application. Let's go ahead and do a rebuild. Build all succeeded. Go to the host application, select the control, and let's look at the events here. If we scroll up, we can see it now has a color changed event. When you rebuild this for the first time after adding an event, it may take a second or two to update this. So don't be surprised if it's a little bit finicky that way, but it's there now. And we can set this to any method that we want. But first, before we do that, we have to go back and actually fire off the event. Because right now we have the event. We have the event up here at class level. Then we have the method that will actually fire the event. But now we have to call that method when we want it to be fired. So we go back up here to the scroll method. And in the scroll method, under the try catch block, we can add a call to this new method on color changed event arguments. That was right. Empty. So this just sends an empty set of arguments to the on color changed event and it fires it off every time that scroll bar is changed. So let's see how this is actually affected our our host application because now we have a public event we have a delegate method that will invoke it and we have a call to that method that will fire it off every time the user changes one of the track bars so let's see how that affected the application so let's go back to the host application Let's actually add some controls that can make use of this. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit here. Now I have three text boxes on the host application form called red, green, and blue. And I want those text boxes to display the actual numeric values every time that control changes its color. So I'm going to come back here to the, I'm going to select the, the uh, control first, come back here to the events. back to the color change just double click okay so now we have a method now what I want to do is set the values of those text boxes to indicate the numeric values of the red green and blue elements from the user control that we set up so I'm going to say text red text equals Color selection one, control color red to string. So, what that does, it takes the red portion 
of the color value that we set up and it puts it in the text box called text red. So let's go ahead and copy that. And let's say text green. And set that to the green element or element value. And then text blue is the blue element. And let's go ahead and go, go back to the form and run that. And now, whenever we change the value of the user control, it fires off that event. At first it changes the property, fires off the event, our host application hears that event firing off and goes and gets the value of the property and updates its own controls. So it becomes much more useful than it was before. So just to review what we've done in these two videos, we've created a user control that can be reused again and again in different applications. Now that control can hold a lot of different functionalities. It can have various controls that work together to provide those functions and it can have properties that store data and it can fire off events so that the host application knows when the control is trying to communicate information to it. The user control actually has events that it can fire off. As you see here it starts with a public event. You have a delegate method that actually invokes that event and then the delegate method itself is called by the appropriate code within the user control. This enables your host application to actually listen for the event once the user control is included within it and then it can take the appropriate action. It can do whatever it needs to do with the data that's been provided by the user control. Now this might seem like a lot but once you analyze the parts and understand what each one is doing and how useful this can be it actually becomes quite a bit easier to work with. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video informative. Be sure to check back for future videos. Have a great day.